let's kick it off. Let's go. That's it. That's it. That's that hitter. You know who that is, baby. That's that Stevie Starlight. There you go. There you go, girl. There you go, big dog. Put on an extra scarf. I bet it could be higher than a mountain. Put on an extra scarf. We getting naughty. Set me free. Just we are getting naughty thank you guys for being here uh this past thursday this is um this is an episode that is brought to you by gray block pizza gray block at 1811 pico boulevard in los angeles on the way to the beach you know get that hitter i also want to let you know that hey did you know this past weekend is now available on spotify Spotify is making it easy for you to stream this podcast and many others like it on your mobile device, desktop app, and smart speaker. Open the app on mobile or desktop, click on the browse channel, and then click on the podcast section. Take me with you wherever you go thanks to Spotify. Play me for the children. Leave me in a room on on speaker and put your grandmother in there or your or your, or your senior citizen grandfather in there uh, in a wheelchair and put me on the speaker next to him and let him get that vibe because we're out here slinging this vibe. Real, real quick, we're about to get into the episode, and I want to thank you guys for being here with me. We have uh, Nick Davis is in studio today. Nick? What's up, Theo? How are you? I'm really well. Man, I want to thank you so much, uh, in addition to uh, Chris Perez, who isn't here today, but who's helping produce. Um, you're here today, and uh, and we got our first guest in. Hell yeah, Jay Moore. I know. And you've worked with Jay before. You've been in studio with him before. Yeah, yeah, over at uh, the Adam Carolla show. He was a fan favorite there. Brings characters and a uh, great pod. Yeah, he's a wild animal, man, and I'm so excited we're going to get to him in just a second, and thank you for being here with us, Nick. Uh, I want to let you guys notice a couple of upcoming dates. April 6th and 7th, I'll be in Tampa, Florida at The Attic at Rock Brothers Brewing, and that's almost sold out. Uh, April 20th and 21st, I'll be in Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey at Bananas, or Bananas, as they say in Spanish. Um, uh, June 15th and 16th at Yuck Yucks up there in Calgary, Canada. So if you Canadian, get out there, boy. And July 6th through the 8th at Levity Live in Oxnard, um, and I'm so grateful you guys will be here. All tickets are available at theovon.com slash tour, T-O-U-R. And we'll be launching that Dark Arts Tour uh, very soon here, as soon as we get this dang website put together. But we have Jay Moore in today. Um, I'm excited, and I'm so grateful for you guys for being here with me. Um, and have I not been talking into this the whole time, Nick? I feel bad. I think they know you're you're talking to them. They're all right. Okay. All right, guys. I just want to thank you so much. We're going to go now. We just recorded the episode with Jay, and then I did this part after, to be honest with you. And uh, and we had Jay Moore in, and this is our first, uh, our first guest. We had Uneven Steven a while back, that gentleman I met at the DMV, and he came in here with some issues. Boy, he had that, you know, I mean, his eyeballs was in, you know, just in the Dead Sea. He was out there on that fire water. And then we had another gentleman. You know, um, Mr. Roger Rod, but this is our first real guest in the studio uh, here, and welcome, and uh, we're happy to have Mr. Jay Moore. Look at these pipes, kiddo. Let's go in. Wow. Oh, yeah, and you're, are, are, you're Irish, huh? Irish, German, Scottish. So you might not make it. Might not make it? Let me tell you something, man. There's a plane crash. I'm walking out, and I'm not going to be like that asshole Leonard Skinner that got shot at somebody's front door. Yeah. That's one of the best stories that nobody tells. What happened? So he, so uh, we're here with uh, with Jay Moore. Oh, hi, we're live. Hey, thank thank you guys doing? for joining us. Um, so Leonard Skinner died. Uh, he did not die, but the band, a bunch of members died. There was a plane crash. Leonard yeah. Skinner, 
and a couple dudes died. One guy survived. He had like a broken pelvis, broken back, broken legs, and he walked to like a farmhouse. Mm -hmm. Like there's like clockwork orange. There's been a horrible accident, and the guy opened the door and shot him. Wow! And he died that way. Just so he survived it, all the way to the door. Yeah, that's. I would be uh, like I, I'd show up at the gate swinging. If that's, yeah. I'd be like you mother. Hey, I just fucking survived the plane. Are you fucking yeah. kidding me? A little yeah. buckshot all through my body. <laughs> Like you get shot in the chest with buckshot, it's in your legs. Like it's everywhere. Yeah. From the inside. Yeah, I think that's the kind of thing. I bet it, right when you get shot by it, I bet you start to itch because it's Yeah. That hot burn. We're talking specifically gunshot, right? Yeah. Twenty two guy like you would blink off. A twenty two, yeah, you could shake off. Twenty two you could still drive to the C V S and get what your wife needs. Unless it was the Mossad, then they'd put it up your butt. What is that? Uh, the Israeli Secret Service. Uh uh. They get into bed like they dress up. Oh, you don't know about Operation Wrath of God? Uh uh. After the 72 Olympic massacre, Golda Meir, after they told her what happened, the prime minister said, send the boys. No. And then the Mossad, the last guy they killed, I think was 1996 hmm. from 72. He answered his cell phone. Hello, is this a, you know, whatever? And he goes, yes. Boom. Took his head off with a cell phone. And so the Mossad is like a dark... They're like a dark arts army kind of for Israel? It's their secret service. It, um, they're like Marines? Yeah, but like uh, Netanyahu was one. And like they would oh, literally wow. dress up in burqas, walk around like women for a day, mm. and then crawl into bed. And then the husband would come home. They put a twenty two in his asshole, pull the trigger six, empty it. Oh. And they get back on the boat. They'd be back in Israel in like six hours. Dude, that almost makes me. Some part of that made me like a mildly sexually turned. You're on holding, a bit. yeah. You are. You <laughs> are adjusting. I don't know what that was. But so this is Theo Vaughn here, and we're you guys here. Listen to his podcast. Yeah, and thank My you for joining us. Thank you, John Ferguson Moore. We're. Uh, I said that like no, John Ferguson Moore. You know, you're the first guest that we've ever had. Why is that? Well, we had gang, one, gang. We had uh, one man who had some issues. Uh, <laughs> who I met at the DMV one time, but he hasn't. I don't know. How he was, fell how, off. I can't believe he was available. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. the dude at the DMV. Oh, he came. He's a hot ticket. He was shining, man. He came. I mean, it seemed like somebody just, you know, just hidden, just electricity in his eyes, boy. When he showed up, he was pretty bent out. This man, Stephen, and uh, and I haven't been able to get a hold of him. I've I've called him a couple times, and then we had another dude. This guy is kind of an older Wigga kind of guy, and that was this guy named Roger Rod. I don't know if you know him. He's a comedian. That's my rap name. Is it Wig really Wigga? Oh yeah, I'm I'm debating. I go back and forth between uh, parallel. Oh, that's good. Parallel ogram. Yeah, <laughs> he's gonna get with the program. What? Um, it's actually. By the way, that had no thought other than that moment. I don't know. I want you guys to think my fake rat names. I uh, was parallelogram, or that it was that bad. I was just you know off the top of my dome, kid. Mine, honestly, dude. And this is like I wanted to be white nigga back in the day. But and I know that that's kind of a you know I mean now it's like you know I would hope that you're all out of fucks at this point yeah like I, are you like me Theo Vaughn I like when a celebrity apologizes you'll ask me man like Bill Maher's apology enraged me really the, jo the joke was perfect yeah the joke was perfect structurally contextually and it was in counter to a creepy fucking white guy saying come on down we'll put you to work in the fields yeah and he goes what. What did you say? We'll put your work in the fields. Yeah. And he goes, I'm I'm a house nigger. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And then Twitter gets going. And Twitter's the death. Bottom line is HBO goes, if you don't apologize, you can say goodbye to whatever million dollars. So he does the apology. But it, the it's thing is, fucking who's that apology he's for? Fucking, he's not a racist. Yeah. It's for HBO. It's oh, for I boss. think that he's probably just as racist as some he's people are. Look, I don't think a comedian can really even be racist. This is, our, this is our tribe. Gays. And blacks and like women, like you're a homophobe. Like homo, I'm in show business. Like, what yeah. are you talking about? I can't be. Right, I don't think like it's just. Absurd. But the more you defend it, the more you seem like a guy that's defending what he believes in the opposite. Yeah, it's like you're up against. A, you all, I often feel out here like I'm up against a mountain. But I was talking to my friend about this yesterday. Like, there's also this weird vibe that like all gay people are like the friendliest people. A lot of gay dudes that I know, Bitchy. even my buddies, are assholes. Yeah. So judgmental. Your outfit's a little matchy, matchy. You know, yeah. Well, that's everybody. I mean, so we're so right. Like, it's everybody. So like that in its like that in of itself is you and I having a bit of a racist conversation because we're saying that like gay guys do this when it's society. When it's everybody. Society are just fucking dicks. Okay, so then do you think that for some reason then that Don't like see, first of all lower your fucking voice when you talk to me, okay? All right. Do you think that for some reason I <laughs> then that I will like. 
so th- so based in that that like if everybody's just an asshole but I guess maybe it's like gay guys don't get it's like they get sometimes this pass that they're not assholes just because they're gay like they get this shield know. of armor maybe I don't do assumptions man maybe I'm not airing you out to drive but maybe yeah but I do know this is what I know about gay guys they love the cock yeah but they don't necessarily need a cock to like get what they need yeah like they have mouths and like mutual masturbation parties and stuff like that do they really i hope so where at i'm gonna find out we yeah. will be there <laughs> if it's just mutual masturbation dude that'd be a great that'd be a great movie <laughs> two dudes that go undercover into like a gay men's um you know sex house or something health crisis yeah <laughs> no yes yeah, and they but like they stripes. have to not get fucked that's the rule now this would be a good uh thing if for you, fraternity gay for rush boosters millions yes yes if you get fucked you lose all the money if you get fucked but you, you have to do everything out. but yeah can i uh blow a guy why would you ever ask me that no i don't know i don't know <laughs> yeah. like in stripes when he goes last question it's standard are either one of you homosexuals no like flaming and yeah. then harold ramus goes no but we're willing to learn and bill murray goes would they send us someplace special for that <laughs> amazing i haven't seen that movie man like black the stereotypes i think are stereotypes because they're true yeah. irish people are drunk i'm an alcoholic black people don't tip right uh stereotypically those, i was a waiter a black couple came in at the end of your shift you're like i'm not i'm not fucking staying i'm not gonna chop up pineapple slices for this guy's blended drink yeah and i'm giving me a quarter and go that's for you my man yeah now every friend i have goes i you've been to dinner with me i've an incredible and they are like incredible tempers so it's some shit i held on from my past yeah that's the thing sometimes i wonder if they're just things that i hold on to from a long time ago that like i don't know if they just don't serve me anymore if i if i i don't know i can't even tell you know? i would say none of it serves you or me from a long time ago like yeah. we got fucked up in our living rooms how tall are you i'm probably i'm well, six no, foot. that's that's weird you'd say probably yeah but i haven't checked myself in probably 15 years uh, so you think, yeah, maybe I had a growth spurt at 32 or? Yeah, my, I have a grandfather who grew two inches in his 50s, in his early 50s. What was he watching? Uh, I don't know what he was watching. I mean, he was probably, I don't know what he was doing, but he grew so two inches in his 50s. And I mean, here's yeah. the crazy part. Oh, you're talking about cop. I thought, yeah. No, I mean in his height. And he and a. I know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like okay. Joke. <laughs> oh, I okay. See, I go really low and then I go kind of come in high. Different frequencies, man. The, uh, but this man, he, um. And he didn't like his wife anymore when he grew taller. How crazy is that? And they were in love before. Did she have female pattern baldness? Serious oh, question. Because that was the first time he could see, like, oh, my God. Like your scalp, I don't think so. I your just, stupid head I could look at all the time. But I think from certain angles, certain people are prettier, you know? So often it That's makes That's a great point. It makes you think that, like, if, yeah, the love of your life were a half inch shorter then you guys might hate each other because you'd be catching that other optic of her. You know, you might be coming in at that hot 46 when you were, you're in love at about a 48. Could I tell you something? Yeah. I'm 47 years old. I've never even entertained or had any notion of this particular conversation. Congratulations. I'm serious. Like, I've never in my life entertained this idea that at a different height, you would be in love with who you're in love with. It's really? It's fascinating yeah different man. angles different optics well they fell out of love i mean it cost him his love of his life you know because it didn't cost it. i mean he got new pussy I don't how, know. Old, how old is he 52 i believe hey i'm 47 yeah i hope you know i'll have cialis like, on a, like <laughs> remember the good humor man had that thing with change on his hip yeah. like ding 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 ding, ding. <laughs> i like cialis like that different dude sizes. i took five milligrams when i hit the hit the comedy store last night the shit i got makes my legs sweat i got some stuff from india right now <laughs> And my pants will be wet, dude, by about an hour and a half into that pill. But why did they? Why did your legs? I don't know. I think that's it's, flushing. That's the side effect. People don't understand what flushing means. It's all the liquid leaves your body except semen and blood. Oh, really? Yeah, that's why you like pit. Your cheeks get red. Yeah, yeah. And my you, lips get hard, and I can't talk that good because all the moisture leaves, and like yeah. you get cotton mouth, and you just keep pissing and shitting and pissing and shitting. You're like, what's going on? You just sitting in a toilet taking a runny dump with a boner. Yeah. You're like, I gotta get in there. You're like, I'm trying to fuck. That's what's going why on. Viagra, I prefer Cialis because Viagra is just like, it's too whoa. Strong. It's too strong. I can't get a shirt on and off if I have Viagra on. I like that. It's too intense. I had uh, So I had Cialis last night. I was on the phone with you. I'm away to the pharmacy to pick it up. And they go, that'll be $600. And I go, yeah. well, I don't have $600. How many pills are in there? Yeah. So they go, 10. I go, how much for a pill? Yeah. And the pharmacist goes, I'll, I'll give you a pill. Oh, really? So I ate it there. 
and then I went home. Oh, that's crazy. Like in front of her. And I now I didn't realize how stupid <laughs> like, I didn't realize how awful like she hands me the bottle with one pill rattling around. Yeah. And as any old drug addict knows, like, no bueno, man. <laughs> I need to pack so it makes no sound as I walk through Checkpoint Charlie there. <laughs> and I just swallowed it. I went home. My girlfriend made dinner and then um Did you it, guys have sex after or no? I didn't ejaculate, but it was it was the longest I've had sex in maybe three years. Oh, wow. Because I have erectile dysfunction. Yeah. Bad. Oh, I've been through. Look, as man. As opposed to good. As, as I tell, as opposed to good? Yeah. Is it bad? As opposed to good? What movie? Oh, okay. I know what that is. Uh, um, um, William Wallace. That's William. correct. The movie William? What? No, it's, uh, what is the movie, Nick? Do you know it? William Jennings Bryant. Is it Unusual Suspects? Uh, no, Harvey Keitel was not in that movie. Oh, word. <laughs> it was Reservoir Dogs, where Tim Roth is shot, and then uh, Steve Buscemi goes, holy shit, is it bad? As opposed to good? Oh. It's hilarious. I don't know that many movies. Like, I'm trying to think of some of my favorite movies are Dream Team. Have you seen that? Maybe. Uh, what is it? It's about um, Alan Klein. No, what's that guy's name? Michael Keaton gets in a mental health facility, and then they get out one day. They get, like, a leave of absence. I and remember they, that movie. Um, they steal a van. Christopher yeah. Lloyd's in it. Yeah, I was gonna say it's Christopher. I do remember that. That movie was good, man. Michael Keaton. He uh, I, he did a movie called I think it was called Life, or My Life. And when the script came out, I was like twenty four. I obviously wasn't gonna read for his part, mm -hmm. but they're like, "This is Michael Keaton's Oscar." Like, and the script it was. It's when he finds out he's dying, and he keeps making videos for his own, his wife Nicole Kidman was oh. pregnant, and he keeps making videos for the kid. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, and the movie's great. And they just were like, we don't give a fuck. Was it heartbreaking? And beautiful. Yeah. And it was great. But sometimes people don't get nominated. Like Robert Duvall, every time he opens his mouth, you're like, he didn't get nominated for Get Low? Yeah. Time to get low. Yeah. Time to get low. Like Keitel in uh, Bad Lieutenant, like he calls Jesus a rat fuck in a hallucination naked. And then he jacks off in like some girl's car that he pulls over. Like, you know, you get a tail light out? You ever yeah. suck cock? She's like, what? <laughs> hey, don't talk back to me. I'll bring you in, okay? It's like, what do you got to do to get nominated around here? Wow. The guy's punching his clown in traffic. I don't know if it matters. I think it's, yeah, I think it's just, you know, they got these upper echelons out here and you got to get in. You know, you got to be pulling on somebody's, you got to be pulling on the right skirt out here. There's some people get nominated that we don't even know who they are. I don't think there's. First of all, you have to nominate yourself. You know, like I. Do you really? Because I was like, how come I never been nominated for uh, like an Emmy, and I was on Ghost Whisperer. And was, Did you feel like you had a role that was deserving a nomination? Action, the sh action, absolutely. I thought that was one of the best shows of all time. And it's not like look at me, look at me. It's the, what I got to say was so astound. And now like prescient. It was all like Weinstein stuff. Like Salma Hayek just slaps me in the face 40 times one episode. I'm like, you don't remember when I came to town, you put your penis in a box and wanted to play puppet show. I'm like, no, nah, that's a medical condition. <laughs> bang, bang. And uh, like that show was great. But you have to nominate yourself. You have, mm. to, you have to send money with your packet and then they tell you if you got nominated or not. And it's like, so that means Kelsey Grammer has been nominated in like 12 times. And he did it every time. You just keep fucking, like Sending how much value? packets in. Bro, yeah. relax. Like we we see you. You're Kelsey Grammer. Yeah. Relax. Yeah, back off. Julia Louis Dreyfus. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess, but I guess at a certain point, if you're in that Hollywood, I'm glad thing, we're on the show today, so we can air this out finally. That's part of it. <laughs> the uh, uh, that's part of it. Like I got a Grammy nomination, but I had to uh, put it in myself for my for comedy album. Like you have yeah. to get a publicist team, and you got to go fuck it. They only make like what two hundred albums a year, or they make two hundred albums a year. There's no way. Right. I'm I'm an optimist, and I'm like, well, there's only two hundred, and I got to think a hundred of those are just bullshit. Yeah. So how many people are actually cobbling together the resources to go check this out? Yeah. And they only pick five, and it was the year I got nominated was Louis C.K., George Lopez, mm. Lisa Lampanelli, Craig Ferguson. It was like if I lose, great because they're all great. Lisa Lampanelli was on my podcast More Stories and she was nominated before and she lost a flight of the Concords and she goes those motherfuckers <laughs> she goes that album's 16 minutes long those those crispy kiwi fucks they're so stupid and dry I go if I lost a flight of the Concords I'd be tipping tables over yeah motherfucking mother <laughs> like what you spent three years making a good album and then and that's they got a happens. song parody like that's why we don't bathe you're like yeah great I just made it. that's not their song by the way and if it is they can have it 
Do you? Uh, I'm get. I'm gonna get back to this erectile dysfunction thing, man, because I've you know I've certainly I've struggled in some some of that dick work sometimes for me. There's two ways I think you get it, and that's uh, well, three ways: mental self sabotage, like getting up in your own head, drugs, mm -hmm. or um, uh, being abused. Mm -hmm. So which one was it for you? I, I think, realize I just turned the tables on you. No, it's you okay. I, you know, I like thinking about this stuff because... I just like thinking about your dick. Well... <laughs> Bricks up lovely, I heard. Did you it, use it? Wait, wait, you took a Cialis at the comedy store. Oh, I just took it to feel good, man. Because well, you Your legs get sweaty. That's not feel good. That's but wrestling But my penis practice. also gets kind of like... My penis seemed like it just ate something, you know? Like it just ate like Thanksgiving or something, you but know? But then you go home and you like jerk off to like porn No, but, I lay... Sometimes I just lay there on my hard dick, man, and just feel like a champ. Really? Yeah. It's That's like Princess it? and the P kind of. I like that reference. You know what's weird when I watch Pornhub or whatever, not sponsored. I didn't watch any last night. They, and I, uh, I'm like eight days What's that clean. like? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they don't yell, fuck me, step daddy. They leave the step out. Thank well, thankfully. Well, it's almost, I think Father's Day should become Stepfather's Day. It's almost at that point, I feel like, where they, stepfathers don't get any credit. And I've always thought that. Have you ever been a stepfather? No, but my uh, oldest boy, he's 15, he's got a stepdad who's tremendous. Really? Like, absolutely fucking tremendous. But now, at first, were you nervous about, like, when that stepdad kind of shows up, or did you feel like, like, the first time you were going to go meet the guy, did you put on, like, a special shirt or anything like that? I put on, yeah, my comedy shirt. I got Gabriel Iglesias' uh, Hawaiian <laughs> shirt. You're lying. And I just laughed at all my, at, uh, at, at no. What's up, Gabe? I, uh, I, you know what, honestly, his mom, being a single mom, I, I, I knew... I didn't know him, but there's just a signal in the noise, and I just sort of knew it was a steadying thing. And I have a book called No Wonder My Parents Drank, and there's a whole chapter about the step-parents, like the number one whammy you can throw at a kid. And it's, it's either the, pan, the Band-Aid, the Panacea, the bridge, or it's the reason you fucking strip. Mm. <laughs> like, man, like, that's it. There's only a couple options. Like, clean your fucking room, get your shit together, asshole. You're like, I'm 16. Who the fuck is this guy that I hear having sex with my mom? Like, wow. I'm going to kill him. And then there's guys that are just steady and great. And that's what this guy was. And he is. And he's beautiful. Yeah. He, he, I, like, my son's, a lot of my son's great qualities are because of this guy. And that's, you got to... You got to swallow a lot of fucking pride and self to go. This guy, this guy did some hard wiring inside this uh, this laptop, and wow. he did a good job. Does it make you feel like you, that that was something you, you should have done? Like, is there moments where you're like, man, this, or you're just grateful? You just find just gratitude. I, like, I'm well, glad. It's a good question, sp specific to the situation, because I retreat well. I get under the porch real quick, man. And uh, I had split custody with his mom. It was, uh, and every time he was with me, it's just like, when do I go back to my mom's? When do I go back to my really? mom's? When and I saw a therapist about it. She goes, you're battling an umbilical cord. You got to give this up. Like you're battling. And it, he was a parasite. She was a host. Yeah. This goes back. This is intergalactic. You're fighting the universe. That's here. pearl oyster. You can't, you can't battle that. Correct. And um, one day he got off the bus and it was like the second day I had him. And he goes, uh, when do I go to my mom's? I said, I could take you right now. And he goes, okay, like real excited. And then, oh. he, then he like reeled it in and goes, I mean, I, but he already let it out. And I drove him to his mom's and I said, uh, if you miss me, call me. Okay, But it wasn't the kind, as I'm saying now. Yeah. And uh, I let a year go by. Damn. Because uh, I was like, and that's, you know, I'm an alcoholic. I'm, an, an, I'm in a lot of A's, A-A-N-A, A-hole. -A -A yeah, I'm in there. And it's like, my alcoholic brain was let's see how they do without me mm. and they did just fine without me which is crippling if you let it cave in on you mm. so after about a year i saw him and it was entirely too long and that's you know essentially like i lost a kid because i lost a kid when you saw him that first time after that year like what was that moment like that had to be he pretty was, heavy oh well, i was in an abusive marriage i'm picking up your accent right i was in an abusive marriage just a little bit that i did <laughs> I'm from now. I'm Brian Snipes from Natchitoches. I'm greatest fucking corner in the league, man. You know why I, I went to Alabama? I thought I was gonna go to LSU, but they sent special teams coach to my house. Man, I look like a fucking gunner to you, man. See, I'm Brian Snipes, 18. That's what's up, nigga. I went to Alabama. You know why? Nick Saban came up that dirt driveway. It was 104 degrees. You don't like it to get hot as a motherfucker, man. And we watching tape. My grandmama go, would you like some sweet tea, coach? And he said, no, thank you. I said, oh, shit, man. That's strike two, man. You don't turn out no sweet tea, man, man. You know what I'm saying? You from there. 
100%, and then man. check it out dude we watching tape with me and i fucked this dude up man he catch the ball separate the nigga from his shoes <laughs> take the ball to the house he start fanning himself he go i think i will have some of that sweet tea i said shit give this dude an oscar man <laughs> so i had to go to alabama just out of respect for that game man out of respect shit but now i play special teams ain't that a bitch <laughs> i don't kick i ain't no kicker man i ain't no special shoes S-H-E-A-U-X. <laughs> Dude, not a lot of letters in some of the neighborhoods down there in Louisiana. Nah, y'all need them, man. It's a, like... Dude, we had a black kid in my Dabo. town. Dabo. Dabo right there. Quincidence was his name, right? And it was spelled, though, like the word C-O-I-N-C-I-N-D-N-C-E, -I, -I, I think. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, quit, quit. And he's like, no, nah, no, nah, coincidence. And I was like, well, everybody's... Any we all lose here. <laughs> nah, no, we all win. So. I mean, I we all win, but it was wild, I man. I don't think it was. We had a girl named Kizzy Laurent at my school who used to beat the fuck out of every dude, right? And she was this tough girl, and you know she had some... White girl? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. And... Creole? Um, no. Nope. straight up? I think 100% black. And she used to... I mean, she would beat any dude up. And then now, though, years later, she has, like... Her son is, like, a, he, has, he he's, um like, one of the top running backs in the whole country. He's a tough kid. And he seemed like a sweet kid, too. What school? Covington High School down there in Covington, Louisiana. Man. Why Good do you place. think you got... Oh, I don't want to flip it on you again. So I was in a... So no, I, I want to know marriage, about that because that, that, uh, that kind of got me. Like, I'm imagining like... You keep rubbing your penis. Oh, uh, that's because, A, these pants are tight in. I'm probably nervous, dude. Why are you nervous? Two friends hanging out talking. Yeah, no, I'm not nervous like that. I'm nervous it's like... Nick staring at your dick. I think just being in a room with two men that this, that, 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 of this size Spit of a room. Spit it out. That's this size of a room and being in a room with two men. You must be great on auditions. You know, I'm not good at all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. They're in like the humor. Dude, I get so fucking nervous, man. I can't even... You ever read David Mamet, True and False? Uh-uh. You need to. It's and good. I, I would never say that unless you needed to. When right. you go into... An, he wrote Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, mm -hmm. and Speed the Plow, and Spanish Prisoner. But, but he goes... Uh, he writes, when you walk into an audition, you, you must know your everyone in the room is your moral and intellectual inferior because at some time... They had the bravery to do what you're doing, and they took the desk. Mm. Say the lines as best you can, and next time say them better. Wow. I was like, damn. Where were you the first 500 auditions, David Mamet? That's Robert E. Lee stuff right there. Well, I like to keep it north of the Mason-Dixon line. I just go with the winner. You yeah. Know? I'm all about the Eagles right now. Yeah. Are you really? Well, I'm not going to back a loser like Patriots, Bill Belichick, sourpuss, man. Yeah. I have to stop doing a stupid accent. It's insulting to you and your brood. Oh, I don't think it's bad, man. I mean, I had to do to my neighborhood um <clears throat> i just feel like the listeners are like how do you have erectile dysfunction go back go back go yeah. back go back abusive oh. marriage well look man i mean he, well then get back to the question then I uh, mean, the, here's the thing the person that i was in the marriage with would never i mean under penalty of perjury and truth serum in their veins would never think that they were abusive right it's uh like a passive narcissism where it's but do you okay so the so you can't but after a while, you realize you can't. There's nothing you can do about that, right? I'm sure you tried. Yeah, I, 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 well, I realized it early that I couldn't do anything about it. And accountability—that's what really makes me crazy. That's a big trigger for me, like in recovery. Like right. people aren't accountable because my program is all about accountability. And what I did, even you know, when I was going through my resentments, my sponsor said, like, "Well, how are you self-seeking? How are you self? How are you selfish while you held this resentment for somebody that didn't show up to marriage?" And I was like, I wasn't. He goes, that's impossible. I'm like, no, you weren't there. Like, yeah. I, and I'm telling you now to your face, I wasn't. Like, I ran myself inside out. Cause but if you knew, if you knew that she wasn't going to be able to meet you at this place you wanted to, her to meet you at, and you kept trying, then what, you know, not to like, because I could see myself doing that. I had a girlfriend like that. What's the question? No, I like this question. Don't, don't be afraid okay. of it. Okay, then... If you knew that she couldn't meet you there and you kept trying, but you knew, you knew in that place in your brain that knows it all and is probably right that you knew she couldn't meet you there, then at that point, isn't it, there's something just kind of ill or sick about continuing to hope that she can? Yeah, there is. But I think overriding that is... I took vows, man. I take those vows seriously. Right. Till death do us part. And I waited for me to able to be able to identify there has been a death here. Mm. Death do us part. Right. What we knew died. 
and I discovered the well beneath the well inside of me because I people go like, hey, you leave no stone unturned. I'm like, there's no more stones, man. I ground them to dust. They're gone. There's no stones. I got to, you got to try everything. And you know, it's a bit like, I know. There's three years where every time you go to the bathroom, you're like, this is impossible. Yeah. But it ain't because you're living it. And you, like oh. physically you get sick, like mentally. And then you file for divorce. I filed for divorce and... I don't want to get too into it at a privacy for her. And yeah. Because I love her. I do love her very much. The opposite of love isn't hate, it's indifference. I'm nowhere near indifferent to like any ex I've ever had because I go all in. I, I think we're a lot alike. Like you love all the way, but then you hurt all the way. And yeah. people in this world are very afraid. They like to swim with their hand on the side of the pool. Mm -hmm. And then when shit doesn't work out, they're like, see that deep. Told you, told you it's too deep out there. But they don't ever love like you love. I, I don't know. I, I think I'm in between because when you say that hand on the side of the pool thing, I you think... wouldn't be an addict if you knew the side of the pool. You 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 only live in liminal space and deep water. That's your th you're a great white shark, man. You you couldn't be an addict if you got your hand on the side of the pool. Yeah. You know, your fucking Daryl Strawberry story. Yeah. Doing blowing your, you know how fucking brave you got to be to just have that night and just go fuck it, fuck it. There's like 18 fuckets yeah. that put you further into yeah. the dragon's <laughs> lair. And I was fucking loving it, man. That's the right. thing I miss. And that's where you get that love is in the deep water, healthy or unhealthy. When you're having sex and you make that connection that's so goddamn deep. Yeah. That's the connection. That ain't, that's not the greatest pussy you ever had. That's the greatest pussy combined with somebody looking you in your eye and saying like, fuck me, daddy. And they're like, not incestuous. Yeah. Like, you will protect me. You have the answers. I won't eat till you fucking get home. Wow like that's deep shit like that's deep water that's a brave woman or like when you hurt you hurt all the way like i've, I've had depression where i didn't get out of bed i pissed my own bed my dog shit in my bed mm. i didn't give a fuck that's a but then my phone vibrated and it was one of the coaches i you know i assistant coach wrestling and the coach at a previous school goes i need you to start practice today and i'm like all right bang out of bed it saved me so the erectile dysfunction was for me when you're married to somebody that's uber sexual and a fucking bardo knockout, no one's hotter on earth, period. To this day, like... That think, lady had it all for if you. If I'm watching porn and I jack off, I want, if my mind, mind wanders and I think about her, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, God. My buddy used to jerk off and then mail it to his ex-wife for like a year and a half. I respect that. What, what would he put it on, like a slide so she could look at it under a microscope? <laughs> no, he just put it on some paper. And, but then she just gets paper. But she knows, though. I, that's one of my favorite, but she knows. Well, you start to know at a certain point, the first time you get it, I think you could think it's snot or something or somebody, you know, had a snail in there and then they took it out. But then that second or third time, you're like, this is what's Is he up. down in like Louisiana? In um, that heat, like in that mailbox in the heat? Oh, I can't imagine, Shows boy. it up, like the, the ad for the sea monkeys come out, the kid's on a bike, there's a guy wearing a crown. <laughs> but you said like, she knows, you said it like Louisiana style, like the same sentence in Jersey. She knows. She knows. She knows. She knows. She knows. So, you know, they're very similar. A lot of times people will say a, a Louisiana accent if you have like a real strong, you know, like, where you at, you know, that stuff, that it sounds like New Jersey a lot of times. I don't believe you've ever heard that in your life. Yeah. A bunch of times people will be like, are you from New Jersey? I think maybe those people uh, stand too close to the oven or... Yeah, those people might be bad off. Look, I, not, mm -hmm. I may not be the tallest hyena at the World Atlas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I got obsessed last night because I'm one of your stand up things I was watching. You said I'm not the brightest bull in the bowl drawer. Oh uh, yeah. And I realized that I looked at my girlfriend. I go, that's what I want to do with Theo because you can literally do anything, make no sense, but no matter what it is, the person knows exactly what you're saying. Yeah. I'm not the softest couch <laughs> on the fishing rod, yeah. but you know, like literally anything works. Yeah. Dude, I'm not. I'm yeah. I'm not the most crippled guy at the fucking, at the carnival. It's hard to. Uh, yeah. It's hard to actually come up with nonsense. It is, isn't like it? Like Reggie Watts, you watch and you're like, oh wow, that's all he does is talk nonsense. Like try to talk nonsense. You, I, you get the sentence three million million dollar. You run short. Harlan Williams does it extremely well, man. Well, yes, but he has the luxury of doing it again. Yeah. And again, like, let's go watch Peggy Sue put a yeah. kayak in the toilet upside down and go for a ride. I got a pet squirrel on my head with shampoo bottles. You know, it's, that's yeah, his bag. Yeah, his, his, anytime it's actually like, him. okay, Benedict Arnold. You know, oh, he always God. Has these, yeah. How you been, buddy? <laughs> I'm okay. I had oh, a paper just... bag on my head at the gas station, but it turns out it was gout. Yeah. I fucking love you, Harlan. <laughs> 
So in man, my marriage, he is a joyous guy. Yeah. So you had the marriage. Pot. So you, you got the marriage, man. And I love this kind of stuff because I'm afraid to get into afraid. Period is no. That doesn't serve you at all. Yeah. Afraid. Like you're a comic. You're one of the best comics I've seen in my life. Yeah. Thanks, man. Ever. I've been doing it 31 be years. Good. No, you are good, and you gotta you gotta let the good, and you gotta realize that you're upper one percent. Period. That's not subjective. Yeah. Nick will tell you that he probably don't even like you. And Nick's our producer here today. Nick, <clears throat> they don't know who Nick is. Your audience, you don't have the transparency. First time we've ever had Nick. Oh, that explains a lot. <laughs> this is a big first day. A lot of kids in the hall. This is a big first, man. How many um, kids do you have out there, Nick? It's a uh, strong like pull. It's like fourteen little kids out there. They all yours. I I don't know who those little children are, but uh, thinking about thanks. adopting them. Thanks for playing along. Um, have you ever have you ever ejaculated inside of a woman in hopes to get her pregnant just out of spite? Uh, no. Whoa, 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 hold on, don't answer that. Objection. You added out of spite as he started going with his answer. So if he wanted to oh, make a baby, yeah. I know what you're doing, and I want that withdra withdrawn. Yeah, okay. That, 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 to well, be a lawyer is great. You'd be like, and that's why you gave her AIDS. <laughs> Object. Withdrawn. <laughs> like, then withdrawn. Don't worry about it. Have you ever ejaculated inside of a woman in the hopes of giving... Two questions. Then, okay. In the hopes of getting her pregnant. I have not. How old are you? I'm 30. You still can. Have you ever ejaculated into a man's butt... I have to not. Get him pregnant. I have not. Out of yeah, spite. That's old, yeah. That's taking the long way home, too, if you're trying to do that, man. Great tune. I'm not coming in some guy's Take butt, the long dude. long way home. I'm not coming in some guy's butt ever, I don't think, you know? Why not? Then you get, why have the evidence? That's a good point. Why? Like, we, instead of well, I paper, want to have something to mail home to my wife. That's I was say, instead you got to get paper towels and wipe it off his stomach? That's a, that's true, man. Oh, I mean, that's crazy. You put the mail man. in the mailbox, don't you? Yeah. You don't leave it next to <laughs> <laughs> we are sick bastards. Um, so so take me back there, man. Was take me back there. When somebody maybe doesn't feel well, you don't come home and go, "I'm gonna fuck this sad out of her." Like, yeah. it's just not a sexy situation. No, 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 no. And then when somebody was sexually active and you met this person and then you sort of see them fade from the photograph, it's a uh, it's heartbreaking and it's weird and then you just don't feel then the, i said this like my act when i do stand up i just there's not like an overshare like there's no such fucking thing as no an you cruise if you're, if you're a comic y your job is to say things that have can't possibly have been said ever before yeah you're like a car that has as much gas as it wants and doesn't know any of the rules of the road i feel like me like you cruise yeah but you gotta know the rules for it before you break it. Right, but yeah, I mean, you know that. I'm yeah, cold train, man. Yes, you know all the rules. Yeah. I mean, you know the book. You know the rule book. Every day I write the book. Yeah, but when you're out there, you're doing your thing. But so tell me this. So I keep trying to. When you get there, so you have a year where you don't see your son. When you get. Well, we, oh, we were just talking about boners. Well, he's. And, I could wrap this up for you real quick. Yeah. So when somebody maybe is depressed, they'll, you think to yourself, the only thing that would make this situation worse is if I lost my, there it goes. Oh, yeah. And then what's the point of doing it if that's going to happen, if it could happen, and then you just get all up in your head. Well, what excuse do you go with? Because I've been there, man, where you I got- I didn't have sex. You I, got that beautiful have, lady there. She's we didn't showing have sex you that. for like two years. Yeah. And my excuse about girls that, like, maybe that I would date was I was in a, I was in a really messed up situation. This doesn't really work. If it works, good on you. Yeah. And they all say the same thing. Well, <laughs> you never been with me. I'm like, okay, sure. Yeah. And uh, I'm already up in my head because I led with it. But last night, the Cialis. Helped you out. It Gave you that cool. hitter, boy. I haven't had sex that long since I was. That's fucking Tony Gwynn, boy. Yeah, same gut. I, yeah. <laughs> no, that, yeah, it was a line drive. That was, that was all line drive the whole way. Yeah, he's a hitter, man. Yeah, I'm trying to think like if I could get a base. It was a Ricky Henderson's like wall on a fly, like that's that yeah. like that, fuck, that frozen rope, oh, thick yeah. ass thighs, <laughs> and that gator dive in a second. <laughs> Dude, he would die. I remember him. He hit a home run one time and he dove in a second. He's my favorite player of all time. Really? Ever? I saw him one time. I think in the airport. It was him or Barry Sanders. <laughs> yeah. Oh my! It was Barry Katz? <laughs> no, it was no you think Katz, I'm Ricky yeah. Henderson, man? Ricky Henderson's the all-time stolen base. I'm a blonde <laughs> Jew that looks like Dirk Nowitzki. <laughs> Good God, man! Ricky Henderson uh, always speaks in the first person, you know. And oh, he really? His he's... name is Ricky Nelson Henny Henderson, and he's born yeah. in the back of a Cadillac. Yeah. And his mom loved Ricky Nelson. I got to interview him once, and he. Uh, 
and I just got like the weirdest shit about him I could gather because I'm like everybody just threw all like baseball shit at him right yeah I'm like so man your mom must love Ricky Nelson he goes my mama love Ricky Nelson that you know that's why my name is Ricky I'm like no I know <laughs> no, I didn't say that I'm like really <laughs> I go, you're so fast. Like, you must have been born in the back of a car. I was, he goes, I was born in the back of a Cadillac. No. Yeah. Uh, Nomar Garcia Parra told me when he was on the Red Sox, Ricky leads up the game with a double, and he's standing on second base, shaking the dirt out of his belt. And the back says, you know, Garcia Parra with two R's, two P's, two R's. And he goes, hey, uh, number five. <laughs> number five. <laughs> and he turns around. He's shaking the dirt out of his belt, and he does eyebrows like it's sexy. He goes, Ricky hit a double. <laughs> And when he got on the bus once, it was full. And Mike Stanley goes, make one of these young guys move. You got tenure. And he goes, Mike Stanley, I got 18 years. <laughs> yeah. All true. These are fucking legit. Like the person that was there told them to me. So my boners work now. Yeah. Thanks to a little orange pill called Tic. I actually just take Tic Tacs. Do you? Yeah. I like to uh, give myself placebos. That treat. I go, you know what? I'm going to take a. I'm going to take a Viagra, and then I just take a blueberry out of my refrigerator, and I go, <laughs> bing, bing, like Popeye, mind fuck myself. Why do you have erectile dysfunction? I, for me, it's some of the pornography. You know, I used to do steroids when I was younger, and sometimes I think it could be some backlash from that. No. But, um... I mean, it could be, but no. No way. But then I go into the fact that I uh, think that steroid. pornography... There's a lot of guys on steroids that are fucking right now. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm not one of those guys. That's a problem. Are you a sex and love addict? Because pornography is in there. Right? That's a progressive addiction. That's weird. I think it got progressive to the point where, like, if I need to really take some time. I have an extended period of time away from it so I can let my imagination work again in a comfortable way. Interesting. Because I, I have similar situations. When I was married, I never looked at it, never cheated. I didn't, like, jack off. Because, like, what if that's a night, like, she shows interest in me? Right. I'm like, oh, I got diarrhea. I can't. For the <laughs> yeah. So Oh, yeah, you can't have diarrhea forever. I had diarrhea for forever i had all kinds of stuff so i didn't look crazy at porn, diseases nothing and then when i got divorced i'm like oh my cuckold what the fuck this is amazing yeah. oh it's not because she's a whore it's because he idolizes her why shouldn't she have this bull <laughs> it's so dark though is it at a certain point i feel oh, no, like yeah it becomes very because i realized i was at a step meeting once and they're talking about addiction versus progression progressive addiction like gambling yeah is a progressive addiction. It's not like we're allergic to alcohol and the allergy starts before we take it. Right. Like if you're allergic to fruit, if you're allergic to like a fig, you eat a fig and your fucking throat closes, your eyes shut, you puke, done with figs. Yeah. The end. No more figs. Alcoholics, we're allergic to alcoholics and we're like, where the fuck, who opened that? What is that? Right. What is that? Where is that? Why? We don't need any glasses. Just give me the fucking bottle. Hurry up. I let, and we start puking. We're like, let's get more after this. Yeah. Like we're idiots. Well, for me, it was always the next thing. It was like, uh, well, my, my, my thing really was just, I wanted to have a little bit of cocaine, you know, in my system. Has anybody ever had a little bit of cocaine? No. Do I sound like Norm MacDonald? Is, I, am I too self-conscious? Like, I feel like every, my case... Has anybody ever really had... Well, I don't think these words have even... These uh, walls haven't even had a lot of words. I've only been in the studio for like a month. A little bit of cocaine. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's so true. Yeah, Dude, I, I got a good Norm MacDonald story, so... Well, I'd like to hear it, you know. I was probably there. <laughs> you know, they say uh, guys on steroids, the side effect is increased libido. But you said uh, maybe I did steroids as a kid. I, mean, I thought I was like a five-year-old guy. <laughs> With a tricep bar in the front yard, they're doing uh, exercises for that big black lady that beat up all the guys. I don't know. That's Kizzy Laurent. Yeah, you can name her whatever you want, but I'm an old chunk of gold from Ontario. I call her trouble. I just call her trouble. Kizzy? That's awesome, man. Kizzy? Yeah. That's either so Southern and black or so Northeast and Jewish. Yeah. I got to grab my Kizzy. Oh, so true. Hello, darling. It's Kizzy. How are you? Um, so pornography became such a problem you become desensitized I bet you became desensitized I think and but it, also your dick does because you just keep fucking oh, yeah. rubbing it well dude I was looking at these magical me, you know I was looking at a lot of these magical bitches on the internet and I was just <laughs> turned out by it you know and next thing you know they got all these ladies and I would be nervous most of the time also I would be I would masturbate and have anxiety at the same time because you see these ladies you know and they're some of them are like whole like are you talking about live ladies in person? No, no, I'm talking about on the internet. You had anxiety mm -hmm. looking at a make believe person who because I would worry, yeah, is out of the business a couple years. Yeah, filming a scene, you know. I worry about their health a lot of times. You got these, you're fucked up. Like that to me is like where you're over the line. Like where you're like, I hope she's okay. <laughs> yeah, really. That's like John Wayne Gacy shit. <laughs> no, no, like I no, kill, no, I, yeah. I kill these kids because I love. Them. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. 
I love these. You check my crawl space. Those kids, they were inoculated. Yeah. <laughs> they all got haircuts. It's crew, and once we hit June, it's just crew cuts every two weeks, man. I care for these kids. That's what they say in the catch. Those kids were well fed. That's yeah. what they say in the catch a predator. Like I'm here to save his life. Not one guy goes, I'm here to fuck him. Are you his dad? Is this cool? Cameras, did I hit the fetish jackpot? Cops? Oh my oh goose, 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 jizz, jizz, jizz. I'm here to fuck him. Man, that's crazy, man. Fuck, what kind man. of porn did you watch? Nothing real drastic, I didn't think. But well, it, no, I mean, if your dick is desensitized to the friction from your hand. Oh, most of the stuff I was watching was probably, you know, adult, all adult. And then well, mostly. Hold on, hold on. Let's just put a pin in this for a second. Yeah. And maybe take that part out. No, I wasn't watching anything perverse, man. You're mostly adult. All adult. He said mostly. I thought I said all. But even still, like the fact that you quantify that you're watching people 18 and up, fuck, yeah. is a little, you might want 18 and up. <laughs> I believe you. Every time, if I, I saw somebody that even looked a little bit young, dude, I would shut it down. And I would, <sighs> then I would. Uh, what was Nick going to say just there? I just think uh, Theo likes to avoid speaking in absolute, so he said mostly at first, but he quickly corrected himself. He just told me old gay guys are assholes <laughs> earlier. 90%. Yo, why would you eat? You know what? I'm better than that. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's all right. It's still good, though. It just took yeah. me a second. Um, but so, yeah, my thing was that I would watch these women. Some of them are holding their butts open and stuff, and I would be worried uh, that people gape. were going to get sick. You know, gape, people were going to catch colds. That was one of my biggest things I remember. Well, they don't want you to have a draft, you know, as a kid. Yeah. Don't uh, don't sleep near that window. There's a breeze <laughs> coming through there, you know. But if you hold open your asshole, oh, there's going to be quite a breeze. You yeah. know, that's a draft. You <laughs> catch a cold. You may catch your death. I don't know. That's or a maybe windy you city, get, man. Or maybe you get AIDS from all the uh, cocks oh. in there. I don't want to get AIDS again. And then I would start, yeah, I would start researching if people had AIDS and stuff. And then it Why? would get just draft. I, I just... I don't know. I just was concerned about the health of them. Are you single, married, girlfriend? I'm dating a girl, and I am um, not married. I've never been married. Like when I was married, I didn't cheat. And because um, you go, you cheat once. You're, that's it. You know, it's not like you work it off your record. Yeah. Like now it's a misdemeanor. Now it's gone because I had somebody write a letter for me. Like, but then once I discovered pornography when I was single. Yeah. I was like, holy shit, this is a whole new world. And my friend, then I go out, like, I want to go on a couple dates, and he's like, you gotta wear condoms. I'm like, why? Were you wearing condoms back then? No, this, I'm talk, this is like this year. Oh, okay. I'm like, con, like, who, where do you think I'm going? Yeah. Like, condoms. Like, like I'm not fucking in, you know, Zaire. Well, I know, but you never know. It's like, yeah, but I, I'm not gonna be presumptuous, and like, Dr. Drew would go, that's the most irresponsible take ever, and I yeah. love Dr. Drew. But it's like, I'm f like, what am I gonna get? Like, if I get like, si what, like somebody a syphilis, like I'm gonna sit with some. I'm, we're comics. We're pretty good. We can read a room, for our jobs. So one on one, it's like fish in a barrel. Yeah. So if you're sitting across from some lady and she's like using the salad tongs to scratch her fucking box during dinner, you're like, yeah, hey, it's a red flag. Yeah, that's breadcrumbs, bro. But we also do a uh, like. That's uh, crouton country. That's croutons. <laughs> we also uh, talk ourselves out of it. Like she can't have anything. Her dad's a dentist. Yeah. She's from Minnesota. She's clean, bro. Yeah. Her dad's a doctor. He's a chiropractor. Exactly. Come yeah. on. What'd she have? She has a neck brace with autographs on it. Obviously. She follows poison around the country and watches. <laughs> She's okay. she, she told me she fucked Sebastian Bach. <laughs> Do you Bach. think this? Do you think Sebastian Bach has ever fucked a woman in a neck brace? Honestly. Yes. I don't. I, all right. Ready? Yeah. Excuse me. I was in Saturday Night Live and I'm at a bar downtown with a, like a penthouse pet. Like in New York City? Uh, yeah you know there's something about new york city i can't quite put my finger on it the name itself yeah it's too much why is that i think it just should be new york but it's new york city new york yeah it's too much i thought i was gonna softball you here on bit really that's what i was trying to do oh something yeah about that name i just ping <laughs> batting cage aluminum bat ding, ding. new york city new york it's, yeah it's too much it's too much it's a double entendre yeah both ways yeah and a bit of a palindrome yeah i think it is anyway no it's not actually it's so, onomatopoeia country i think all of a sudden i think onomatopoeia Boom. that was kizzy's real name <laughs> but it was actually spelt onomatopoeia fuck i love callbacks uh so i'm downtown in this bar with like this rocket ship standing next to me like just it was nuts and sebastian bach goes hey man 
and we're both from Jersey, so like wow. all Jersey guys are just like, all right. Yeah, and he's let's got the wrestle. long hair and he's flipping the hair and he goes, Your girl and my girl tonight. And I'm like, What? He's saying foursome, he's saying. Y yeah, and it's Sebastian Box. I'm like, Whoa. And he's like, Your girl and my girl tonight. Like he's actually doing it wow. like that. And I look and at the bar is like a nine month pregnant, attractive mm -hmm. woman holding like a Perrier and she's like, Hey. Yeah. And to this day, I don't know how I fucking turned that down. Oh. Nine months pregnant. I could have just induced labor. Oh, yeah. Back when everything was working. Mm. Your girl and my girl tonight. Dude, what if you had started that labor? You could be a midwife, man. I would have been. I would have been. And she breaks water all over your dick and balls. That's got to feel good, man. See, that kind of stuff makes me real nervous. Why? I don't know, man. You Something... ever be with a lady that like squirts? Uh, One lady, one time. Did that make she... you nervous? Are you the, autistic? No, the first two times it was okay, and the third time I just I started getting nervous, man. You thought it you was know? pee? Well, it was like trying to. F it was like fucking a bomb, you know. Exactly. And that's what I didn't like. But you liked the Hurt Locker, one best picture. <laughs> well, dude, that's true. You fucking love bomb movies. It was like Tuck Everlasting. It was like a couple of <laughs> <laughs> scenes from Tuck Everlasting. Wow. It was too much. You know why man. I like that particular act? Huh? Because you can't fake it. Yeah. If they're squirting, they're fucking, they've lost their fucking mind. Yeah. It's like, maybe it's fist. Maybe. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All I know is this person has left Earth. And when they come back, they're going to go, oh, my God, your sheets. And that was another thing. The cleanup is too much, man. It's too much. And that's why I do all my sex in the back of a U-Haul, you know? <laughs> Black and Decker table saw. And I do uh, circumcisions with a plain weed eater, you know? <laughs> I love Norm McDonald. I heard him on a podcast go, I hear people imitate me, you know? And I'm like, I sound fucking retarded. I'm like, oh no, I hope he never thinks I'm mocking him. Dude, I opened up for Norm McDonald at a casino in a Cherokee casino in Oklahoma. This is a while back. And we were playing in a celebrity poker tournament that weekend, right? And he and uh, the next day we're standing around, there's a bunch of just not attractive women in this hey, room. Oklahoma. You yeah. Know, you said it. And he, uh, he goes, he goes. Baker Mayfield with a twat. He goes, yeah. He goes, man, there's a lot of hot chicks in here, huh? And I'm thinking like. Was that like, John Wayne or was that Norman? That was Norman. Sound like John Wayne. That was Norman McDonald. Oh, oh, Hold oh. on a second. Well, there was a lot of hot chicks in here, huh? I love it. And he go, and I was like, I'm thinking, well, I'll, you know, I'll accommodate Norm McDonald. You know, maybe he's getting older and he doesn't know kind of how hot chicks are or anything anymore. So I'll just be like, yeah, yeah, definitely are, man. A lot of hotties in here, you know? And he goes, fuck no, there aren't. <laughs> That's what he said when I said What, that. the H? Ah, there's not hot chicks. Ah, you fucking walked. How, how long ago was this? This is probably eight years ago. Norm MacDonald is one of the most legendary secretive coxmen of all time. Is he really? Like L. McPherson, like. Wow. Oh, yeah. Like, you're like, wait, what? But then you look at him, you go, yeah, he's like this like, 1950s handsome man, like mm -hmm. a movie star. Yeah. People are like, no. I'm like, fucking shut up. Trust me. Like, you look at the guy. He's got the bluest eyes. Mm -hmm. He goes, nah, I mean, being a chunk of coal here. But I think you owe daddy an apology. Yeah. Huh? So why don't you just suck your thumb and lay on your back? Yeah, no, I don't want to. You know, like, I don't know what his game was. But it's fun. Do you think that, like. I hate doing impressions of hypotheticals. I only tell things that actually, like, happened. Do, like, do an impression. Do you start to think about, like, what do you have to use as we get older to attract women? Do you start to worry about that kind of stuff? No. No. I got to trust the compass, man. Yeah. A guy, there's this fighter I, uh work with and he's like let me just ask you something like black guy no no i said i work with him well i'm just trying to get an <laughs> I idea to get more racist <laughs> by being completely ambiguous wow no What's i'm trying matter? to get an idea of who it is like you're not giving me any a guy well the story is about something else yeah what am i here like that's what a wife does so there's a fighter i work with in spokane I was in Spokane. I was at the comedy club. It's called Spokane Comedy Club. And I always wondered why they didn't like name it, name it. It was a Thursday, but it was crowded for a Thursday. Because yeah. as you go across the, you're like, what's the fucking, st you need an editor for your fucking face. Oh, yeah. You need an editor in the car with you going, nope, cut that part out. He didn't give a shit about her French bulldog. Yeah. Nope. Nails, hair, got it. Uh-huh. Blow dry. <laughs> a blow bar. Great. Wait, what? No, it's not. Keep going. Keep going. We have to be at Wendy's 2 o'clock on Sunday. Thank you. Writing it down. <laughs> okay. Just edit your face. A lot of word count. Some people should be put on a word count. Me. 
Certainly. Really? Oh yeah, it's awful. That's my moat, man. Oh, the and the, mo- on the, the mo- phone you're definitely chatting, man. Yesterday we talked on the phone and you I went on. I control it. Yeah. I, that's my moat. It's a safety I, mechanism. I like if I if I keep you out there, it's like a jab, a stiff arm. But if I like you, you're in here, and then I just want to like bathe you and everything that's ever given me pleasure. Like that's Johnson and Johnson country right there. It is. It is. that's in New Jersey too, by the way. Is it really no more tears? Yeah. Dude, uh, we loved it. We used to use it when we were kids. Dude, we used to put it all over each other even when we weren't even in the tub. Mm. We loved Johnson & Johnson. Keep going. I remember my sister for her birthday wanted just a <laughs> gallon of Johnson & Johnson. And we would fucking just wait till our eyes burned and we would put it all over each other. We loved it. It was like the nicest thing we had in our house. It was a can of that. Or a jar. Uh, it wasn't a jar. It was like a plastic... <laughs> tall a like can, a bottle you need like a big can of beans no, no, no. <laughs> you had the generic you need yeah. the can opener and your dad's like y'all need a can opener man you just like what blew my keys from the truck. i'm about to wash everybody's hair in this motherfucker you're like we loved it i we rubbed it all over each other my sister i'm like we <laughs> loved it we love johnson and johnson man and you rubbed it on your sister's body well we rub it all over each other it was just like a it was a fucking it was just a you were in a cult you know, it wasn't, man. It was you were in just, a cult where yeah. kids just rubbed Johnson and Johnson on each other until they ejaculated. And- Dude, I remember one year my mom for our birth, somebody's birthday, I guess she didn't have a bunch of money, so she got us all two liter sodas, right? Everybody got their own. Aww. And dude, I remember we had so much fun shaking those things up and just spraying each other. She saves all her money. Oh. And you guys fucking sprayed it. But we street. loved it, though. It was a fucking was she $8 dollar birthday. Was she, uh-huh. happy? she was okay. She made us do it outside. But I mean, we fucking, my sister had cherry seven up on her for a month man and, and we did you get it, it off with the lotion <laughs> no, turpentine no, no. it's a hey, it, you can't have the sweet without the stink dude i grew Turpent- up in turpentine country do you know that well i do now yeah covington louisiana turpentine was and this is back when time was king you know this is back why then. was it it was invented just to get paint off of shit well yeah and everybody hates it but it's like you know who hates it people look down on it you've completely in- constructed that in your own brain That's- i think i don't think so Nobody. If you have paint on your hands, where's the turpentine? Period. Right. That's the thing. Everybody doesn't. Everybody's like, oh, fuck turpentine until no, you need nobody it. Nobody is like. Nobody thinks about turpentine at all. Right. right. It's a. It's a trigger hippie song. I know. Okay. Well, that's the problem. Is that nobody's thinking about it. Well, yeah. Nobody's thinking about baby aspirin until you have a baby and you get a fever. I think it mills around in the back of your head. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Like the other liquids mill around back there. Gasoline. You need it. Milk. It'll be. You know. In through two days, I'll need it. You know, what liquids are milling around in the back of our heads? Think about it. Water, always. And that's a necessity because water's right there inside of us telling us we eggnog need Eggnog just up on a shelf looking down like, eh, you know when I'm coming in. Yeah. Eggnog's coming around. You know. Yeah. Grape juice, not really as much. Maybe when you were a child. Yeah, you know what's amazing? As you get older, you're like, this is fucking horrid. Yeah. Ugh. But when we were a kid, grape juice was king, man. That was cotton when we were oh, a kid. Wow. I just remembered a bit that I have to write down because I was like, I gave my son like uh, grape medicine for his cough mm-hmm. and i'm like well this might have codeine in it so i should probably drink the whole bottle first yeah. just to check it out then yeah. i went back in i'm like i spilt it all over and they give me another one and then i realized grape for kids in medicine doesn't taste like grape it tastes like purple they've mastered what purple tastes like uh, <laughs> if you eat a grape and have like grape like cough medicine like no but like i got an now and later a banana now and later and that that wafts a fucking banana there's a banana taste in there yeah but grape they just that's what purple tastes like yeah they want that purple. Yeah. They want that drink. They want that drink, man. I do, want my do you, think, do you think that some, you think getting high is better if you're African American or black? Is your high better? Yeah. I think it's socioeconomic, not color. Yeah. I think if you're broke as fuck, I think that high is nice. Yeah. That, and that's I think a good if point. you're rich, it's like I'm high and it's the same people and I got a view of the ocean. This is kind of stupid. Yeah. But I think if you're broke, like think about the highest you've been when you were poor, you're like, this is, mm. this is an alternate reality. I'm really dancing at this wedding. Yeah. Yeah, you can lose. Yeah. Yeah, because when you're high, you, yeah, yeah, that's a good point, man. That's a really good point. When you're high and you're poor, it takes you out of being poor. It's like yeah. anything's a possibility for a little while. I'm just, I got to get this down. That's Tastes okay. Like purple. Uh, and when you are, and when you aren't, and when you are rich, then you start to get high. You're like, fuck, I might be missing out on opportunities or something, you know? I think when you're rich and you get high, you're like, what are they fucking talking about over there? Yeah. About me, how to fuck me. Yeah. 
I'm going to go over there and cause a scene. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're broke, it's like, look, I go to meetings and they're like, well, I drink because my fucking, my father had fingered me in front of my sister and this. I'm like, I drink because I fucking love getting fucked up. And I keep going because the more fucked up I get, and then it crosses terminal velocity. And I go, if I keep drinking, I'll pass out and it'll be done. That's it. When I was 14, I had a rum and coke. 13, I had a rum and coke at a wedding. And I was like, apparently I'm breakdancing. And you've been dancing since then. And I'm a motherfucking breakdancer. Do you feel like a, you're a demon? No. I work for the Lord, sir. Yeah. I do indeed. I'm a conduit. Yeah, I'm a conduit. I'm an instrument. It's St. Francis of Assisi. That's, that's the prayer I look at and go, okay, I get it, man. I don't do a great job. But, man, but I'm supposed to be a conduit. You are a conduit. That's yeah. what brought us together. Man is God in ruin. We're just a fucking rubble of what the what the higher power the the universe is. I'm the Lord's Detroit. I don't think you're that bad yet because you're on the mend. You're more like uh, this the river walk in San Antonio. They're like, what the fuck is going on down here? Like, oh look, gondolas. Okay, okay. all right, yeah. They got a plan around here. Charles Barkley said all the women down here are fat. Don't give a fuck. We're up and running this business. Yeah, Popovich still here. I like it. Um, we're gonna let's do a couple of calls. You want to pipe some in, Nick? We'll talk about some things. I'm about to pee my pants. Are you? How do you say gang gang? Gang gang, boy. That's it. What's yeah. it stand for? What's it mean? It just means, you know, that we're going to do this together and we're not going to be alone, you know? And but it you means trill. fuck rich people as well, usually. But what about you? But you got more money than half the people to say gang gang. Mm, I don't think I do, really. There's you motherfucker know? saying Dabo. Dabo Sweeney's name is Dabo because there goes Dabo again. Dabo. Dabo. I knew a boy named No Dante, and his mom. This is the best thing I've ever heard. His mother. Put, I doubt that, by the way. <clears throat> I mean, you got the White Album, probably. So go ahead, but whatever. But his mother put. She knew he was going to be misbehaving, so she put No in the front of his name. How great is that? I don't know of anything. It, it's it's good. No Dante. It's sad. Good. It's perfect. But I don't know if society, name wise, if we'll ever top Anthony. Yeah. Yeah. Anthony Hardaway. Well, there's no, that's the only one that I know of. But like one of an the actual best. One of the best, too. Like, I'm not sure how. Anfernee. Yeah. That's, I wish I named my kid Anfernee. And I'm not joking at all. And fucking Anfernee? Hey, Max. Go fuck your Max. I got an Anfernee. Yeah, I got a Max nephew. And yeah, I'll tell you. I've my used... son's name is Meredith. It means Lord of the Sea. It's his first name? Yeah, Meredith Daniel. What do y'all call him, Death? I call him Meredith Daniel. I call him Meredith. And my people, Mackie, when he's like, people call him Mackie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and but I'm like no that's 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 a tight name and I talk about it on stage I'm like if he was a black slot receiver that was a game Meredith guy Daniel oh, in all day. college like Meredith Moore like just a hand like a Rick Fox looking brother like you see this motherfucker named Meredith Meredith Moore His name is Meredith that's pussy central this motherfucker's name is Meredith <laughs> well I feel like TMI yeah <laughs> no sorry well, let's go back to that moment then so that year you don't see your son you then you see him, him for again a call huh? it went uh, it was longer than that because we saw each other uh, piecemeal. And I had to get well first. And yeah. I went back to A like March 14th last year, and I didn't drink. I was just fucking ill, man. I was sick. My head was fucked up. I was roiling around. I was depressed. I was sad. I was sa Sadness was something I never addressed. Like, I'm fucking sad. And um, I needed a welcome chip. And I had been in the program May 5th, 1998. I went to my first meeting, but I never got a sponsor. I never like, did the work. And they say at the end of it, keep coming back. It works if you work, work it. it. I never worked it. I never wrote out resentments. I never took my inventory, like my defects of character, like really looked at them. And it's amazing. The more I did the work, the more people in my life started talking to me finally the way I wanted them to talk to me. Mm. But they didn't change. I changed. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Then when I got well, I was at a meeting in the Palisades and I, for some reason I got like this fire in me. I said, I got to go write out my resentments now. I'm like, wait till the end of the meeting. I go, I'm going to wait one more second. And right when I waited, the speaker goes, there's a universe and me. And that's fucking impossible. And I'm like, whoa, wow. Now I can go. But yeah. I waited and I heard that before I left. There's a universe and me. And that's impossible. I was like, holy shit. So I'm, write, I'm writing out my resentments and I'm mad at so-and-so for keep, and I put it in quotes, keep me from seeing my son. And then I kept writing, why did I just put that in quotes? Because one of my defects of characters, I've never given 100% at anything, ever. Mm -hmm. It's just athletics, stand-up, fighting, girls, meeting people. Everything's always just come really easy to me. And the one thing I gave 100 at was my, my marriage. And so that caved in on my first defect of character of an insatiable need, irrational need for validation. I get applause for going to my office. People go, fuck yeah, you're at fucking work, let's yeah. do it! Yeah. Every single time, right? So... 
the marriage failing fed the like not i need more validation and why give 100 percent? because look what just happened and i just was out of the marriage long enough that i was actually six feet tall and i was tall enough because the only that one percent i didn't do was just go to their house and ring the bell and say i'm sorry mm. to the stepdad i put a lot on your plate man and wow. i did and i started crying and he held me like a baby he held me dude I'm like, I put a lot on your plate. I miss my son. I still know what his air smells like. And, I, blah, blah. and he goes, it's okay, man. And he fucking held me like a baby. Like I'm in debt to this dude forever. Like this guy's got a problem. I got a fucking problem. Yeah. I take care of my problems. This man loved me. And I put shit on his plate. I went over there with a sincere apology. And I had to make an apology to the mom. And it was legit. Like, man, I just, I didn't show up. And that's the thing I hate most about my father. My father was in the house. All the, my father did not show up. It just, right. there's different angles and stuff. Yeah. Optics, as you would say. Yeah, he was there, but not there. But he was. In some elements, but, but he was. But it's my insatiable need. I need him to throw a catch a different yeah, way. you need a different every thing. Every day, like, yeah, yeah. That, but I'm fucked up. I'm fucked up. Right. It's me. You it need is. him, to, yeah, you need everything. You need him to no dress one, you in no furs and feed you. No one could possibly sustain what I need. Feedings. And I need them, yeah. yeah. Nobody can sustain what Nothing. I need and I need them to read my mind as the one I At need the same it and time, to leave me the and, fuck alone. And you also aren't even going to tell them what you're thinking because they should already no. know what you're thinking. And I'm a lonely person, but everything I love to do, I do alone. Stand up, wrestling, I love to fish, and I paddleboard and I fish from a fucking paddleboard i love to drive and that's I, insane that's what i do alone and that's when i'm my happiest because i can't talk there's no talking alone on a paddleboard but you have a fucking four pound bass towing you past dukes yeah yeah dude. you gotta come out you're just right? that crazy guy i'd love to come out there yeah, I, mean, I never fished off a paddleboard before it's uh you only eat shit for about two months but dude. then when i saw my son and then i made amends and i made amends and then i see my son he's like this beautiful if you could just time stop life and meet you two years from now, or like meet your your girlfriend, or I don't know who's in your life that you're closest with, but if you just like two years, er, and then two years later, mm. you're the proper age, and you get to see what that person's like, as the awe, the wonder that you would have. Wow. But it happened. And you're like, and then I had to go back to the stepdad and go, this kid's got incredible qualities, and it's your doing. Wow. I see you, man, and I love you for it, and I'm so grateful. And then you go, but I also see... The basement, I see that hurricane door. I see the first, I'm like, oh, I built this motherfucker from scratch. Like, he can't shake that. And then they little by little, the thing is, if you ever, if your listeners are ever like away from a kid for a while, you cannot talk, you may not, you are not allowed, you may not talk shit about another parent. And every time you do, you sink smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. Like, I had to be six feet tall again after the a kooky i went to a mental hospital twice and the only reason i didn't take the bed is because i had the improv the next night and i said i can't do that to rita yeah that's the and i had a great <laughs> show and then a meeting the on sunday morning and then a monday morning wrestling practice was like clear and i got well that way somehow it was crazy but i was in the fucking place downtown in kaiser damn because I, I didn't have any money they could take me and if you have a kid that you see you may not defend yourself you can't talk shit about anybody you just have to be silent for you don't learn shit when you're talking and that kid will teach you more and they'll tell you more shit that's untrue and you just sit there like oh you just take it yeah because your child's talking and feels comfortable enough to actually share shit about you that he would like to scream in your fucking face even mm. if it's not truthful Damn. and eventually the truth don't move man the truth doesn't move and little by little by little by little the kid starts saying things like, I remember you played Chet Baker for me when I was a baby. And like, now I'm the only one in my class that knows who Chet Baker is. And like, I bet that hits you in the heart, huh? You're like, good. Go, okay. And then you realize, then they just, you know, you could say things to your kid. I said to my son, I go, you know, there's a guy in California. He's watching the sun go down. There's a guy in Japan watching the sun come up. There's a guy out in outer space. He don't see the sun at all. All three of those guys, that's reality. And it is reality. Yeah. So you just got to be aware that there's a guy in Japan, there's a guy in Malibu, there's a guy in space, and just, that's all I'm gonna say. A lot of perspectives going on, at the same time. Little by little, they just, they figure shit out, they know. Do you think your son, do you ever worry that he doesn't, that, he, do you feel like he loves you enough? Yeah, he, he, uh, it's it's astounding. It's, it's the most powerful thing I've ever had in my life. Okay, so then- I have you, a 15 year old son that's six feet tall, wants to be president of the United States as he did when he was a baby. I mailed him an index card and I wrote, 
Is housing a right or a privilege examined before you answer? And I get an index card in the mail a month later, and he wrote, yes. <laughs> I'm like, damn, he's going to get assassinated. <laughs> like, he's Bobby Kennedy level, right? Yes. Or were you amazed at how... Um... Baby, I'm amazed by the way <laughs> your son... Is that Brian it? Adams? Yes. Dude, I was doing a show... No, and... it's Paul McCartney. I was, was in I South Africa at... and met Brian Adams at a yogurt bar, at a uh, breakfast bar. Is that what they call it? Yeah. Here we just say glory hole. <laughs> now, are you amazed that children, just as a parent, because I've never been a parent, are you amazed that kids can, like, you know, do they bounce, like, just how resilient they are and how much they bounce back and what their yeah, affections it, are like? Like Yes, but it was also my resentment was there was nothing to bounce back from. I was right. sort of omitted. And the goal, I felt the goalpost moved. Like, well, now's not a good time, a lot of that. That must have been hard for you to, like, just hold on, hold... And, and I went. Ins- I went to a mental hospital twice, yeah. and that was on top Man. of the marriage, on top of a job that made me insane. Like, so you're being gaslit in three different directions, and you're like, the odds of a a fucking job, a wife, and an ex, all f- saying the same thing to me are zero. Yet it's happening, and they can't all be wrong. When you're a kid, your mom goes, "So everyone's wrong but you," yeah. and you go, "Oh." But then as an adult, you look at that shit, you go. Yes, yeah. I'm fucking positive. It's an impossible <laughs> confluence of fuck. That's the Andrea Gale, bro. You're and an Andrea happened. Gale. Yes, but then I also realized there's a language I speak that don't. Com- it doesn't doesn't get, convey. It don't go through the UN headset. People don't know. So I had to work on my shit. Damn. I'll leave it out on that note. Home of the motherfucking outcast. <laughs> You're troubled, man. You're interesting. I'm though, not dude. troubled. No, I love that you said on the phone. He goes, "I've always dug you. You seem like a real strange dude." Yeah, but I'm not troubled. But not trouble, like I mean. But it's I. I think I'm trouble, but I think it's Relax. good. He got really fucking defensive. Yeah, you? I did. I get nervous. No, sometimes. not trouble, trouble. Like fucking troubled, <laughs> like a math problem. Trouble. <laughs> I. I'm not saying you're walking around with your fucking fingers and kids. You know, he's fucking troubled. What? Troubled. Fucking troubled. If you were one of the wet bandits, dude, based on that voice, which one would you be? The tall, skinny guy, or would you be one of the wet bandits? The wet bandits are the guys that attacked Macaulay Culkin in that um, when his parents went out of town. I'd be. Uh, I'd be stern because I think he does the VO. Does he really? Oh no, he does the VO for the Wonder Years. Which one? Would I, which guy that gets hit in the fucking face and beaten up? Do I want to be first? Yeah. Neither. But well, I have who to. Who would you be? I'd be Pesci. More fun to play. Yeah. No, I. I don't know. Will you be the guy that leaves the faucets on because he wants the acclaim, or will you be Pesci who's just in there? It's a tough one. I'd be the fucking idiot who leaves the faucets on. I think. But that's the guy I want to play because I've played like all yeah. the like fucking cocks and dicks. I've become Rutger Hauer. Yeah. Get Jay Moore. We need an asshole. Is, really? Rutger Howard? That's great, though. The I don't hit, know who that is. The Hitcher? Uh-uh. I'm a oh. huge... I'm a Michael Landon fan, though. Did you ever work with him? No. Dot. Yeah. Calls are coming, right? I love him. You want to hit a call, man? We'll hit a call. Let's hit a call, and then... Um... You have erectile dysfunction because you do things that gives you erections. You say thing I'm troubled. You just let me know if you want. Oh, I've got... I mean... Send him through, Nick. I think Jay's mad at me. No. Are you, are you, come on. Are you kidding me? No way. No, I don't really think you are. I don't think. I don't know, man. I, you are uncomfortable. Yeah, I am uncomfortable. Right, I all, get uncomfortable. Well, you did say that. I see you say that a lot in your stand-up. Like, my, my, you know, your default setting, uncomfortable. Yeah. I like that you share that on stage because it's truthful. Yeah. And that's that's you. Yeah, I think I just, I don't know. I guess I just get afraid sometimes. If you're uncomfortable or afraid around me, that's just you. Like, yeah, yeah. sealing up in like a balloon boy bubble. Well, I appreciate that. And yesterday you called and you said, you know, the first thing I want you to know is that I don't think you could say something that would, I don't think you could be rude. Yeah, the last part of your text was, and none of this was meant to be rude. And I hope it didn't come, because I read from the bottom up and I just read that one part and I called you. I go, I don't, I don't think you're capable of being rude to me because I know your heart. You're just a great, you're a good person. You're a great guy. Thanks, man. I appreciate you saying but that. I can help you with this more fear. comfortable. I can help you with this fear. Yeah? Well, yeah. And it's based on nothing. It's not based in reality. It's not based on anything you've actually experienced. You've never been in a room with three guys and been like, this is where they fucking pinned me down and broke my jaw. Yeah. It's all the construct of your conditioning and bullshit. I'll do it off mic, but... No, it's fine. I don't care. I mean, I don't care about doing it all mic or off mic. I just... I'm trying to listen to you and think about what you're... And, like, feel what you're saying, you know, and try and see where it lands, like, inside me at the same time, you know? I have to pee my eyes out, but... All right. right. This call, though... Well, let's been, piss. Oh, but this call's been waiting, right? All right, let's do a call. You want to do one and we'll get poor person we can, and um and if you want I can this has been great you. i can help you with that fear for real no i'm 100 serious man i, I really ne- need i help. never had it it's weird i'm the outlier i know that 
Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Maybe you're not trouble. You're just an outlier of everything. Certainly. Here's Alexander. Hey, Theo. This is Alexander in Largo, Florida. Just want to call and say, hey, man, share some share some good news with you. My lady and I are signed up to run our first 5K race on April 7th. Ooh, so that's they exciting. Run. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be it? celebrating with you in Tampa that same night. So even more exciting. That's it, man. Just want to say we're out there getting active, you know, getting after it. Trying to be uh, life survivors. You know what I mean. We'll see you at uh, Rock Brothers Brewing, bruh. Rock Brothers Brewing, come see Theo. Well, no, I didn't Vaughn. know that that guy was, uh, and when he first started, I thought that man was honestly into men. I thought he, when I first heard him saying, especially Largo, Florida. A lot of assumptions, man. Yeah. And it his seemed guy like. He was doing a 5K with his, and I said something, I was an asshole. Oh, he's off the line. I, I said, I was a dick, like, oh, and he goes, it's exciting. I was like, is it? And then I went, you know what? They're doing it together. It is fucking cool. Because people that run like marathons, they got intimacy issues, man. You think? I know. You got to get ready to do like your run every day. Then you run for two hours alone. Then you come home. It takes an hour to shower. You got to eat the specific food that nobody else is allowed to touch. And then, you know, then then maybe somebody leaves for work. Yeah. Like, this guy's doing it with the old lady. So you think doing it with the old lady is... That, they're together, man. They're together. And they got to train together. They're gonna do, and they talk about what they're doing. That's good stuff. So that's good stuff. Uh, yeah. I was, there's no negative there. All that's, right. I gotta pee. All right. All right. I'm sorry, I took a long pee. I fell asleep Ugh. sitting down. On the to- I had to sit down to pee. I had to pee so bad. You know what? I, I sit down sometimes when I pee in, in, in the morning. And if I pee in the middle of the night. I know, but I, that's because you got a boner. No. You know the only reason you get an erection in your sleep is so you don't pee in your bed. Is that true? Yeah, you can't pee when you get a boner. I went to bed, no joke, till I was probably 32 years old. I Well, I, I, I'm I sorry. Yeah. And I went to bed. I was a bedwetter, but not like that. Yeah. But I went to bed from the top of my dresser. Oh, <laughs> that was my first joke ever. I can't believe this shit. I was 16. That was one of my first joke. Dude, that's a fucking great joke. Captain, I've never heard I was, that. I'm athletic. I was a captain of the miniature golf team. <laughs> I missed last year. I was hit by a windmill. Uh, and I'm a bedwetter. I mean, everybody, but I do it from the top of my dresser. That's so good. Man. That's, that's what good I one. thought my first five minutes was. And then I saw a tape of it, and it was like watching. Like another country's parliament talk? Like, yeah. what the fuck is Watching the dis- C-SPAN. The dispatch box. Look across at Mr. Cosgrove, the fine gentleman from Edinburgh, and he threw... Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? I had my five minutes. I knew what it was in my head, and I watched it. I didn't know what... I didn't understand what I was saying. Wow. That's so first funny time, to me. I've never heard that. I wet, bed, I wet my bed my whole life. I mean, most of my childhood was constantly... Because then I had to take a pill because they came out with a pill where you um you took this pill from the doctor and you wouldn't wet the bed. And when that came out, finally I could go sleep at friends' houses because I always had to be the kid who was up all night walking around your house loitering. Or I had to be the kid who, you know, was... um Delicate ecosystem you grew up in. Your dad was just packed. Not around. Yeah, just and your mom to had to underwear. do all of it, and you were aware of how much your mom did. Yeah, and you, your fear is from the childhood. It's, it's the fear of I, I can't upset this apple cart. I, I see the delicate nature. I, I see this ecosystem. I can't run through this garden with boots on. Yeah, and there'd be hell to pay. But you, there was never hell to pay with you. Your mom was incredibly gentle with you, and she saw you. Like you know, she saw you, and she didn't laugh. I saw you say that in the teaser. Wasn't a lot to laugh at, but you knew she knew. But with your dad's absence and with siblings, they would catch a beat. And, and for some reason, you, I mean, you got your fair share, but it was disproportionately, it was them, not you. Mm. Yes or no? Only say yes or no. No. You got most of the beatings. I think everybody got decent beatings. It's one or the other, buddy. It's not true. Because somebody doesn't fuck around, so they don't get any beatings. How many kids? Yeah, I don't remember. That's a good question. You don't remember how many kids are in your Four family? Four kids. That was an odd response. How many yeah. kids in your family? I don't remember. Well, somebody, I remember. There was a where, small person with a bad haircut. In the pecking order. I was number two. I had a brother that was two years older than me, and then two sisters that were two so years older. You took beatings from him, too, because he had to take out the aggression. Yeah, and he wasn't, neither one of us were good fighters, man. But you, well, he was a lot better than you were. Two years yeah. is an eternity when That's eight true. to ten years old. Yeah, his arms were heavier than mine. So you had to live in fear of that? So you were on eggshells. On the way to school, in school, on the way home from school, in the house, where you're supposed to be safe and sound, and your comrade, your number one guy, your go-to guy, is the one that's going to kick the shit out of you probably the most, because he can't fight anybody. He can't beat anybody up except you. Yeah. That'll make you know what? Now, that's true. That'll make a guy carry fear. Yeah. 
Maybe that's the When's yeah. your mom pass? My mom's still alive. She's still alive? Good. Yeah. She's Is your uh, dad gone? Yeah. And my that's, dad's that's gone. That's very conflicting emotions. What about your dad? They're both alive. Both they my, are? Both my dads. Paul Reiser and the other guy. <laughs> my two dads. No, both oh, my parents dude, are alive. Oh, dude, the other guy with the mustache. Nobody knows his name. Right. Uh, both my parents are alive. They're still together. They're in Jersey. And I, uh, I just, yeah. I just, my dad, I just seemed to annoy. But that's how he just was. Really? And, now, um, and I sent him a long email once, like, let me tell you something. Because I realized, I asked my father, in the back of my book, um, no wonder my parents drank, there's like a, a questionnaire to give your dad, mm -hmm. or your son, or your uncle, or whatever. Mm -hmm. The answers will blow your mind. Like, these are not the people you know. Like, what's the best part about having a kid? What's the best part about having a son versus a daughter? What's the hardest part about raising a son? How is it different? When's the proper time to have the birds and the bees? When do you go to bed? Are you ever done being a parent? Mm. And my father's answers, I gave it to him like two years ago for some reason, and not when the book came out. His answers fucking shook me, man. It was like when you were born, it, basically like when I was born, it was the greatest day of his life, and it still is. It fills wow. him with joy. I'm like, joy? I've never seen this guy have joy in my life. He reads books when he gets home from work. It's dinner time. They watch TV. They go to bed. Repeat. Yeah. And my dad was never affectionate, so I, I always made a vow that I would always show affection and always be present. My grandfather was like a big deal. He was like president of Revlon. He was a band leader. He ran for Senate. Revlon? Yeah. From the hair care? Makeup, all of it. Oh, wow. And then he was a perfumer, and then he started in Britain, that made his own company. And then, so my father just explained like, basically like, this guy was kind of a son of a bitch. And he treated us, he wrote, I remember my dad wrote, he treated us as adjuncts instead of children. Like, just, you know, then we, we acquired the ping pong table room over here. Like, mm -hmm. it's like, no, I'm John, I'm your oldest. I run track at Rutgers. So it felt like buddies. Did it feel like buddies? No, it was demanding. Like he was a he was a, a compiler. Like he was on Ni he was in Nixon's uh, cabinet. He was uh, on Watergator. The, no, he was on the up and up. He's not stupid. Yeah. Fucking spy on people that might be against you. Come on, man. I'm from Jersey, man. That's some straight Whittier fucking faggotry. Yeah, he's a clean Watergator. I have a sister. Named he wasn't Whittier. a Watergator. He was on the Council for the Aging. He was in the cabinet. Yeah. As a special guy. Yeah, he was a. Uh... He fucked Marilyn Monroe and Bobby at the same time. Your father did? Uh, sure. So um, my I have grandfather a named Whittier. Whittier, yeah, beautiful. I love it. I have all the things we could talk about. Look at it. I'm telling you. I said, how many times the universe tapping us on the shoulder yesterday on the phone? I said, to you. so my grandfather was like just not warm, and my father vowed to be like really warm. So what I perceived as like an absence of he perceived as warmth was no, it was warmth because he didn't have anything to go by. There's no diorama oh, for him yeah. to study and go. This is how you treat a child warmly because he didn't know it. Right. So everything he ever, like, he always played catch with me. He never, ever, ever in my life said no. That doesn't sound like a big deal, but to a guy that's insatiable like me, my wrestling matches in Booton, New Jersey, up Route 23 in the middle of fucking nowhere where toothless hillbillies are sitting next to their wives and their kids and whatever, like just that, that old joke, you know, yeah. is my sister wife or whatever. Always went on the road. Wrestling matches started fucking six, way into at 6 a.m. So you guys are close. I didn't, I didn't know it at the time but because I was too busy with an alcoholic brain as a kid. Like, what's with this guy? What's oh, yeah. with this guy? What's with this guy? And what's with this guy is he quit his job in the city, so he was home with us more. Wow. And he wrote that all out. And I, was, and I just wrote him back like, I owe you an apology. Every time I've ever written, because in Gasping for Airtime, a Saturday Night Live book, I'm like, this guy never gave me affection in this. I'm like, I'm mortified that I ever wrote this about and you. And all those questions, they're in the back of your book. I could send them to my mom or something. No wonder my parents drank, yeah. You'll be, you you have to, because her answers. Man, I need her answers. You will get her answers. But my father didn't send his till two years later, and I didn't expect them, which is good. It's and like I my was, taxes. I was fucking, <laughs> I, was, yeah. I was low when I got that shit in the mail. And I just and you needed it. I was alone in my apartment, like, scream crying like ah and then my housekeeper comes in i'm like get the fuck out she's like we don't have a windex i'm like i know it's why do you think i'm crying because i can't see out of any of the windows look at my man right here i love you at the farley mural yeah man this young man named brady matthews painted this for me and i it was his first one 
Well, Brady yeah. Matthews needs to hear the story, and then we'll go jump on to more stories. Yeah, we'll jump on to more stories in just a second. David Tell and I shared an office at Saturday Night Live. If you want to make sure nothing gets done, put the wow. two of us in an office, like pull it out. <laughs> I can see that. He like... had a box set of Otis Redding that Lauren gave him for his birthday, and he cut a hole where the mouth was and put a cigarette in it and lit it. Like, that was two weeks of fucking laughter. Like, how long does a cigarette laugh? One of them would go faster, and we're like, he's actually smoking. We weren't well. So Farley comes in on a rewrite night. There's no reason for Farley to be in the building. He was the most beautiful man I ever met in my life, ever. My grandfather, my other grandfather, Red, my, my mom's dad, Maurice Ferguson, he was he was the one, man, that saw him. He was the most beautiful man ever. And then Chris, right behind him. And Chris was in sober the two years I was there. He was had his shit together. And he was, you know, in a van down by the river. It's then. Yeah. And he comes in, he goes, what are you guys doing? And me and David Tell go, We'll give you a hundred dollars to take a shit out the window. Oh yeah. But we said at the same time, like creepy twins, come mm -hmm. play with us, Danny. We'll pay you a hundred. He asked us how what we were doing and our answer at the same time. <laughs> He's from Brooklyn. I'm from Jersey. He's Jewish. I'm Catholic. Like I, what? I, we'll give you a hundred dollars. Like the cadence. Like we were singing a song together to shit yeah. out the window. Oh man. And he goes, That's "Give God. me the money first. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we we're like, "Oh fuck!" Patent pockets, bro. And including, and I'm not exaggerating. Making lunch, baby. $4 in coins. It was exactly $100. <laughs> and so he takes the paper money, Chris Farley, puts it in his pocket, and then reaches across my desk, which is against the window, the longest way you could go. And fuck, the strong motherfucker, man. Yeah. Lifts that shit, tilts the desk, and the coins, again, a cartoon, ding, 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 into his pocket. Like, <laughs> ding, 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 like stacks of quarters, stacks of, like, ding, 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 ding. It was amazing. Drops the desk, opens that giant ass window, goes up on the window ledge, and rests the window on the back of his neck facing in the building. Oh, wow. Is the 17th floor. Yeah. He could fall to his death at any moment. Especially that's at his weight. Too. That's, that's a make, risk. He, he's a very graceful man. He, I, he was at no risk of losing. Did he have long legs? No, he was just like a football player, and he just had incredible balance. You see him do cartwheels and yeah. shit and flips. He was great. And the only thing in the building was like his nose, his hands that were on his <laughs> knees, and the snot bubble coming out of his and nose. And all the holding, just his head against that window. Well, yeah, and he's balancing on the ledge as well, right? Right. But it became obvious, and I do tell the story on stage, it became obvious immediately that Chris didn't get it to pop. He didn't have to shit at all. Oh, but he had the money, mm -hmm. and he always delivers, and the deal's a deal, but he always delivers. So you're doing that body Tetris at that point. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I love you. I swear to God, I'll fucking marry you. <laughs> you start fucking playing Jenga with yourself, bro, because you got to find a turd in you. <laughs> body Tetris? I'm mad. But that's true, though. Mad. You just move it around? Yeah, I mean, you're doing things, yeah. That's when you get the diarrhea with the stomach ache. You're like, oh, I gotta move this bubble here. Dude, that's when you start. Now's when I need that shitty piece that comes down, makes it right, and comes down again. Yeah. The one that fucks up your whole yeah, game. Yeah, that little hitter. You need that yeah. baller. So, like, the window's rattling from effort. Like, dr, dr, dr. <laughs> he's purple, and he's it's Farley. He's going like, son of a, I'll get it. Urgh. And is he saying Urgh. stuff also to make you guys laugh at this point oh, as well? He's, he yeah. can't. He's insatiable he that way. Not. He can't. And after like a minute, which is a long time when a guy's above the skating rink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like if you ever see like a fig, one fig Newton without the Newton. <laughs> one of those, like that size, that shape. Like it was like square shape. Oh, yeah. And it was thin. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll guess consistency. Fell like the snow through the window behind him. Fell from his ass. Mm. in the window onto my fucking desk oh that's a detroit dove right there that's it beautiful. was he wipes his ass with his hand there's no papers oh, no. we don't write we don't write yeah we do nothing in there but fucking i watch him smoke i do diamond push-ups and i call escorts <laughs> and fucking farley wipes his ass with his hand and goes Arr! and starts doing like a zombie walk and starts ch chasing in quotes because he's going doing a zombie walk me and David Tell are hauling ass down these hallways, but like in Scooby Doo, he's always right fucking behind us. <laughs> he's just going, Arr. his eyes are all the way in the back of his head, so we don't know how he can see. And it went from like, haha, to like, oh no, like terrifying. Like I fought a Harbor Heights Mexican Mafia gangbanger who was on PCP, mm -hmm. and he wouldn't go down. I'm like, oh, yeah. this is great. Just ba 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 ba, like right between the chin and from his fucking middle of his eyebrow to like his oh. bottom lip, just ba ba ba. And then like, 
a minute in, you go, this is a horror movie. I, bah, 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 like, I'm getting tired. <laughs> and you get going, you fucking near? You where am I? Bah, 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 bah. I'm like, somebody fucking jump. <laughs> Mitch Mullaney gets out of his car and beats him up and the whole set. <laughs> Mitch Mullaney, like, apparently just fought in Oakland his whole life. It was amazing. Rest in peace, brother. He saved my life. Wow. So Farley's chasing us around. There's a hallway going to Lauren's office that's single file only. Lauren Michaels. Yeah, yeah. Lauren Green, actually. Yeah. He took over the show for a while. Did Speaking. he really? No, he just mentioned Michael Landon, so oh. I jump on that. I love Michael Landon. I Okay. Have you told him? No, uh, well, I didn't get... My, my mom almost met him one time at the fairgrounds, but... Um, We're going to get into this on mine. Okay. Let's start more stories with this. Okay. Because this ties right into everything I was just saying about your home. Okay. It's fascinating. He was the ideal. He was the guy. Oh, yeah. I get it. Even the pajamas that were the whole body red pajamas. You're like, see? That's what a man wears. Oh, he was Prince Henry. He was Prince Henry. Prince Harry. Prince Harry? He was our, you know, he was our... Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. Know, he was Estee Lauder. He was somebody, you know, he was the big deal. Attell and I had a single file only. And I'm like, I am, I am 11 months removed from college wrestling. Mm. So I'm like, and this motherfucker's right next to me, ass and elbows, David Tell, and he's like, a, I'm like, neither one of us are giving it up, and I'm on the bookshelf side, and it hits my shoulder, and my <sighs> shoulder comes out of the socket and goes around me like a grandma taking her bra off at the table. Yeah. It's, it felt like it just went around my body, and if you're not sure you've been knocked out, it's like I'm not sure if I napped or not. You did, because there's no way, like, no, I didn't nap. Like, I don't know if I napped. Like, then you something yeah, happened. That's what, yeah, that's if you're that's like, did I just get fucking knocked? Yes. Yes, you did. And I, oh, I'm standing there. I'm laying on my back, and Farley in the shit hand. And he's going, <laughs> and I'm like, um. And I go, fuck you, Farley. I broke my fucking jaw. I'm like putting it on, like really acting. I made myself cry. And he goes, are you okay? And he stands up. And I just got up and I ran out of the fucking building and I jogged home and I got under the covers. It was like the most amazingly funny, the most impossible thing, the most frightening thing. And I like fooled like a beautiful man into thinking I was hurt. Yeah. And like that hurt me worse than anything. His like, are you okay? Like when he stopped being a zombie. It was like heartbreaking. I just fucking wanted to throw myself in front of a cab. But that's but the, it's almost perfect, man. I can imagine at that moment you're under the covers and you created all of these all of these things happened and you're filled with all these feelings. You're filled with excitement, laughter, uh, fear, chicanery because you guys created this crazy thing. The 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 vision Tom that, Foolery yes, and Rumpus. The vision that somebody got shit on. The vision that you know hurt and all of that. It's like and then you were able probably to just to like sleep comfortably. That's an enormous event. But it just shows how many feelings you have to have sometimes as yeah. an alcoholic to be filled with, to be able to just... Oh, it was an overload. It was too many feelings. Right. But the one that got me was the, are you okay? Yeah. That, that fucking, to this day, I, I could, if I think about it long enough, I'll fucking cry. Like, that's a beautiful, beautiful man. Like, there's a reason you mention his name and people yeah. go, oh my God. Like, yeah, you think you know, but you don't know. But I'm glad you know what you know. Yeah. But he was the most beautiful man I ever met in my life, not named Maurice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the most beautiful man. Oh, ours is always, I mean, growing up it was Michael Landon, and, and as an adult I haven't chosen. But when I was young it was Michael I'm right Landon. right across from you, buddy. I'm it's, right here. It's I know okay. you are. And I'm glad you are. But um, No, I can't fuck with Michael Landon. Nobody. I mean, Deacon the, Jones. I don't know who that is. Get the fuck out like of my Philadelphia? Get like out of my Philadelphia? Like the 76ers? We're going to wrap it up. Um, but, 76ers? No, we'll go to more stories. How about right, that? Yeah, yeah. We'll go over to more stories to Jay, uh, to Jay Moore's podcast, and you'll be able to catch us on there. Jay, I just want to thank you so much, man, for coming in. It's super. I love you, brother. I you see know? you. I can't look you in the eye when I say it because I don't want you to be uncomfortable, but I do. That's well, that, man. You are you are the absolute guy like i can't wait for your future like you're the funniest fucking guy i'm like i have to just do this podcast mine meaning mine and then you wanted me to be on yours i'm like yeah let's break bread anytime any place bro i appreciate let's it man. crack some fucking skulls out there yeah it means a lot dude i'm a huge fan and thank you for entertaining us i'm a strange guy and for being here yeah man you're strange man you're not troubled though no i'm not troubled i'm aware of my troubles which i think negates it yeah, it's like you're an Indiana Jones in your own... Where's my whip? Yeah. Where the fuck is my whip? Always. I hate snakes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I appreciate you. Yeah, thanks, bud. Hey, Kizzy, if you can hear this, <laughs> come fuck with it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for uh, being here uh, this episode. Happy Easter to you or happy Passover or happy... 
you know, atheism, if you're into that, if you're into the, you know, if you're out there, you know, juggling the, the devil's ball bag and you like being out there like that, you know, we just, you know, the full moon is your only friend and that's, then that's the, that's, that's for you too. And I hope you enjoy yourself and I hope you got some candy from a rabbit or I hope you do. But, um, I'm going to spend, uh, spend this weekend in Louisiana and I just wanted to say thank you guys this was our first guest that we had in the studio and you know um, I'm just uh, I'm hopeful I'm excited for doing more and I'd love to know any feedback that you guys have drop a comment on YouTube uh, constructive criticism please let's try and you know just keep it you know let's try and serve our criticisms in a, in a healthy manner and in a helpful manner if we can also, I got to let you guys know about uh, Starflow. Starflow is the, the location for fans trying to link up and get closer to their favorite celebrities. So sometimes you don't want to be a peep in time. You know, you don't want to hide out in uh in um you don't want to hide out in Giselle's trash or, or you know or hiding out in a, in, a, in a dumpster by her house. So that's why you go to Starflow and you get that direct celebrity interaction. You know, it provides a hub for consumers to access their favorite talents and celebrities and exclusive content in only seconds. Think about seconds. There went some. It's available on the App Store or at Starflow.com. It stays out of that sell your information secondary market. It's a safe place where you and celebrities and, um, and, 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 and brands and everything can coagulate. And touch each other on the shoulder. You know what I'm saying? It's about users, creators, and content. Check it out. Starflow.com or Starflow on the App Store. And we'll have the link below in the YouTube um, and on the um, iTunes. Thank you guys again so much. Uh, this is our first guest and we uh, hope for many more. Thank you Patreon for your patience and support. Helping us get into the studio. And um, and hope you guys have a good one, man. Uh, be good to yourselves. Uh, you probably deserve it.